Hello and welcome to your dose of daily outrage from Union Solidarity International. My name is Walton Pantland and today I'm coming to you from the train between London and Glasgow. Just returning from London where we've been attending our advisory board meeting and having very interesting and important meetings with a number of trade unionists. Uh, we'll tell you more about that later. Firstly, today's outrage is over Evo Morales and the grounding of his presidential jet. The uh, Prime Minister of Bolivia, Evo Morales, had been visiting Moscow and uh, was returning in the presidential jet and uh, I think France, Belgium, Italy and Portugal refused airspace and the jet was forced to land in Vienna. Um, Morales was kept in Vienna for 12 hours, I believe. He's finally been allowed to board the plane and leave. But uh, it's absolutely outrageous uh, that the, the sovereignty of Bolivia is challenged in this way, really. Um, at the request of the US and the reason that this happened is because apparently or allegedly the US suspected that uh, the cyber pimpernel Edward Snowden was on board and uh, there was no evidence for this and of course he wasn't on board and uh, even if he was what what right does uh, do, do those countries have to, to check his presidential jet and uh, I think it was the foreign minister of Bolivia who accused who said that their president had been kidnapped by European imperialism and he's quite right because that is pretty much what happened and um, it's it's really appalling also when you think that uh, what Snowden has exposed is national security agencies spying US government spying including spying on Europe so it would make sense for countries in the European Union to be providing some form of asylum or protection for Snowden, Snowden not uh, acting as, as a police force for the US. So it's a very, very disappointing uh, situation, but it really shows, I guess, the desperation of uh, um, both the US and Europe and not wanting those links exposed and essentially trying to capture Snowden and, and, and shut him down. Uh, the other really important news is the, the case of what's happening in Egypt at, 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 the, at the moment. We've spoken about this over the past two days. And uh, as you'll remember, there have been massive, massive protests calling for President Morsi to step down. And uh, I think there were as many as 14 million people in the street. And the army issued an ultimatum uh, saying that it was going to institute a coup unless Morsi stepped down and called an early election. And that is very, very interesting because um, Morsi was democratically elected. We don't know what the army intends to do. There seems to be some hope and some faith among the Egyptian people that the army will obey the will of the people and uh, return real democracy and the real root of the revolution to, to people. But there's not really any evidence of this. And when the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces had a caretaker government in Egypt before the election of Morsi, uh, they were pretty authoritarian as well. So it's not really a good sign. And what's really worrying about the situation is that superficially 14 million people on the streets can feel very much like a revolution and it can feel like you have real power and that you're making change but unless you're structured in some way you can't make any permanent change and you can't challenge power and that is what's really worrying about the situation in Egypt the, the potential that uh, 14 million people who are really angry with Morsi and really angry at the fact that they see their country being hijacked by the Islamic Brotherhood and they feel that the, the revolution is being derailed can appear to be giving legitimacy to, to a coup by the army without getting any kind of guarantee and uh, this is the challenge which is faced by political movements around the world right now. Uh, that includes um, movements like Occupy and Indignados. Is a, there has been a rejection of politics, a rejection of mainstream politics, often for very good reasons, because uh, so many politicians and political parties are sold out to neoliberal, neoliberalism that there's no real choice. But worryingly, there's also a rejection of structure and a rejection of strategy and a rejection of uh, any kind of long-term political uh, goal and strategy to challenge power and and to establish something different this is this is really worrying and uh, this is where trade unions can step into the breach because we do have experience of that we do know how to organize we do have branch structures and, and democratic structures and uh, we have a long tradition of um, of organizing this way and it's very important for us to be involved in these movements and to help bring structured power to what are really really important uh, uprisings uh, of democracy uh, and finally, just a report from our advisory board meeting, which was held in the, the TUC headquarters in Congress House in London last night. Uh, it was a very, very interesting meeting. We had some wonderful feedback from um, our, our partners who attended. It was very, very good to see them and get that feedback. There are a number of exciting things that we're going to be doing over the next year. 
and uh, certainly the feedback that we got from that advisory board has given us a lot of ideas and a lot of things that we want to work on um, essentially using technology and the internet to bring trade union activists and social movement activists from across the world together so that we can use this powerful technology to, to strengthen ourselves and strengthen each other and show practical solidarity. Uh, you'll hear a lot more from us on this in the near future so look out for it. Once again, thank you for watching or listening to this dose of daily outrage from Union Solidarity International somewhere between London and Glasgow.